So where I was previously working, um, where I set up a center for um, transgender and gender nonconforming and questioning youth, um, we did a lot of teaching. Um, we uh, used, there's all sorts of free curriculum out there. Um, Fenway Institute has a really good free curriculum that um, works to teach people all the way from the first contact with the organization back through the providers. Um, so everyone along the way can get specific training. Um, and that helped a lot. Um, one of the challenges is that people leave jobs and <laughs> new people come in. And so it's something where you need to do ongoing repetitive training. Um, I will contrast that with Trans Health Northampton, where I am now, where because of who we hired and brought in, um, we are uh, not having to worry so much about that. Um, I will tell you though, you know what? We're not perfect. Um, we actually, someone created a jar the other day where if you um, misgender someone, you write down an affirmation in the jar and put it in um, just to remind us that we are going to do, have, make mistakes. We do need to do better. We can't just keep saying, oh, I'm making a mistake here. Um, because these are the people we're working with every single day. Um, and it is our patients as well. Um, so having people around you who um, have, who you may need to think about their pronouns in ways you never have before um, is really important to it and to help you out. Um, and just practicing, telling people to practice. Sit down and practice using they as a pronoun. Um, sit down and practice using Z as a pronoun. Um, and don't do that with a trans person. Don't do it with a non-binary person. Do it with another cisgender person. Um, and sit down and talk to them because that's the place to practice. Um, we practice enough other things. And my goodness, most of medicine is role play when we're learning how to do it. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs>